Hello, my name is Jakub Prusch from Jesuit University Ignatianum in Krakow. I'm going to talk on a very specific concept from argumentation theory, that is the principle of charity, and I will show that this principle can be extended by so-called presupponendum, written by St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of Jesuits. This might be a Christian contribution to the contemporary argumentation theory, or pragma dialectics. First, I will present the principle of charity in details, and then I will analyze the concept of presupponendum to finally compare these two concepts and to show the relation between them. The meaning of these results might be of great significance for argumentation theory and practice in public debates, especially for Christian philosophers practicing debates. Okay, what's the principle of charity? In short terms, it's a philosophical or communicational principle that requests to, when interpreting someone's statement, to assume the best possible interpretation. Now, let's consider the following example taken from Neil Wilson's article. Suppose that somebody, let's say Charles, makes the following five statements on Caesar. That he conquered Gaul, crossed Rubicon, was murdered on the 8th of March, was addicted to the use of the ablative absolute, and was married to Baudica. The problem is now to determine the significance of the name Caesar in Charles' use. Charles may have used the word Caesar meaning Prasutagus, Baudica's husband. On this supposition, the last statement would be true and the rest would be false. Or we might consider Caesar signifying Julius Caesar, which make the first four statements true and the last one false. Simply saying, when interpreting, we choose the best possible interpretation that makes the largest statements of the opponent true. That is to say, Julius Caesar. Now, let me give you a brief history of development the principle of charity. The first mention of it might be found in Jewish writing from the early 3rd century before Christ. This suggests that if any person makes a statement, then it is reasonable to assume that there is a rational reason for the person saying this. Therefore, it is rational to take into account that, despite of the fact that something seems to be a pure nonsense, there is a rationale which justifies it. For example, if my wife says that she's good and she's bad at the same time, it's rational to assume that her feelings are mixed, than treat her statement as meaningless. Similar threads can be found in contemporary theories of communication. For example, the Donald Davidson in Radical Interpretation presents a principle of rational accommodation, or accordingly, Davidson develops two similar concepts, principle of coherence, which prompts the interpreter to discover a degree of logical consistency in the thoughts of the speaker, and the principle of correspondence, which prompts the interpreter to take the speaker to be responding to the same features of the world that the interpreter would be responding to under similar circumstances. Similarly, Paul Gries, well known for his contribution to communication theory, develops the cooperative principle, it includes maxims of conversation, which suggest that in most cases, when people make a statement, they are trying to be as relevant, truthful, informative, and clear as possible, if they want to be properly understood. It's also a common thread for the principle of charity. The principle was also discussed by various philosophers, Simon Blackburn, Willard Quine, Daniel Dennett, the last one advises even not to choose the best possible interpretation of the given statement, but to improve the statement on your own and to criticize the strongest version of the argument that you can build. By doing this, you are essentially creating a Steelman argument, which is an improved version of your opponent's argument. This is the opposite of the Strawman argument fallacy, which involves distorting your opponent's view in order to make it easy to attack. It's worth to note that the principle of charity, that is, assuming the intelligence or rationality of your opponent, can be also strengthened by assuming the goodwill of the opponent. This is called Hanlon's razor. It's attributed to Robert J. Hanlon and suggests that one should not attribute malice to action of the, or the words of the person when it can be explained by other causes, like, for example, misunderstanding of the topic. Hanlon's razor 
can be treated as a supplement to the principle of charity, so it consists of assuming intelligence and goodwill of the interlocutor. Now, it is clear that the principle of charity is an old and good custom of a culture of disputation, and that it may include various components, choosing the best interpretation, improving the opponent's argument on your own, or assuming not only intelligence, but also a good will of the opponent. Having this said, I will briefly move to the instruction on how to implement the principle of charity in discussion. Well, there are three basic steps on charitable interpretation. Firstly, simply ignore minor issues in the argument if they are not crucial to the main point that the opponent is trying to make. Then, extend the principle of charity to intentions. It's about the Hanlon's razor. To put it simple, when it's not clear that there is an issue with another person's argument, it's good to assume that it is unintentional on their part, as long as it's reasonable to do so. It means that if possible, you should give people the benefit of doubt and attribute issues in the argument to a misunderstanding on their part or to a similar issue, rather than to a malicious intent to deceive. And C. Consider using a logically structured approach. It's highly beneficial, but very rare, to attempt to re-express your opponent's position so clearly and logically structured and fairly, so your opponent could say, thank you for putting my thoughts so clearly. Now, when it's clear what's the principle of charity and how to use it in discussion, we may also ask on the reason of embodying the principle of charity. Why do we embody the principle of charity? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is simply this is the right thing to do. However, it might not be a sufficient reason for everyone. Therefore, let me present a few benefits of embodying the principle of charity in discussion. Firstly, applying the principle of charity make, can make you better at understanding others. It doesn't matter what you're going to do with this knowledge, but it's valuable in itself to understand the others. Secondly, implementing charitable principle improves your reasoning skills. Focusing on fighting the fallacies and practicing of improving them makes you better in building your own arguments. Thirdly, embodying the principle encourages people to talk with you. Usually people like to speak to somebody who's trying to understand what they're saying. Finally, applying the principle of charity makes others more willing to listen what you say. It's very simple. People will listen to you more carefully and interpret you more charitably when, the, when you do the same thing to them. Okay, this is the principle of charity in general. Now, it can be extended in a Christian manner. To see how it works, let's have a look on St. Ignatius' Presupponendum. This is a ground rule for the spiritual exercises, a Jesuit retreat that Ignatius puts right at the beginning of the book. It's about the relationship between the spiritual director and the exorcism, a person making the retreat. However, it can be implemented in any form of discourse, as Jesuit Karl Starkloff notes. He himself applied Ignatius Presupponendum to, the, to analyzing the intercultural dialogue in the context of evangelization. Okay, let's have a look on Presupponendum. In George Gunn's translation it reads, it should be presupposed that every good Christian ought to be more eager to put a good interpretation on a neighbor's statement that, than to condemn it. Further, if one cannot interpret it favorably, one should ask how the other means it. If that meaning is wrong, one should correct the person with love. And if this is not enough, one should search, er, search out every appropriate means through which, by understanding the statement in a good way, it may be saved. Well, that's huge, isn't it? Before we put it into small pieces, let me first give you a brief historical background of Presupponendum. It is in fact a result of Ignatius' life experience. He experienced a lot of less fair judgments and it influenced him as he wrote this instruction. Ignatius' critic seems to have assumed that Ignatius, who was an unlettered man, must therefore have been one of the Illuminati who claimed souls coming directly from God without the meditation of the Church. Thus, early in his apostolic life, Ignatius came to understand how disposed the human will is to condemn rather than to defend, and how prone the human tango is to speak evil of the others. Even in his letters to Jesuits, Ignatius also emphasized to listen long and to speak briefly. 
or as he wrote to the fathers attending the Council of Trent, be slow to speak. Now, we may analyze these presupponendum in details. There are four basic steps of St. Ignatius' presupponendum. The first step includes the principle of charity discussed above, to put a good interpretation on the statement or to others' intention. The second step is a powerful principle of communication, for it requires us to risk entering into one's mind and heart. It's already something more than the principle of charity, it's another step towards the opponent, a second chance. After putting an effort to interpret it charitably, which failed, we ask for clarification. In this way, we also admit that it is us who might not understood it correctly, by a cognitive bias or emo emotional commitment, which could drive us to strong and fallacy. Step 3. It's worth to emphasize that Ignatius does not say to be a Mr. Nice Guy and to pretend not to see false beliefs of, or mistakes. We should correct errors, but with love. This means that we value not only truth, but also the person we're talking to. And the last step is a manifest of taking care of the others who may be wrong. Ignatius recommends to search out any appropriate means to save the other statement, for example, sub by supplementing it with additional claim or limiting its scope. This last step seems to be important especially for Christians who are responsible for the souls. However, it also might be a manifest of goodwill among the citizens to approach the truth through the process of dialectics. Okay, these are the four steps of Ignatius' presupponendum. To summarize, the true value of presupponendum is its potential for creating dynamic of trust and collaboration between persons. It also gives a broad understanding, which seeks to evaluate the statement itself and the spirit in which it is intended. The principle of retrieving exhibits the importance of the person and the truth. And it also attempts to provide a complete objectivity, that is, a knowledge on how to consider the positive values of the statement and to put aside purely emotional reaction or one-sided prejudice. Now, the very last thing. What is the relation between the principle of charity and Ignatius' presupponendum? Presupponendum is an extended principle of charity because it includes good interpretation of the statement and of the intention, but additionally, it includes a feedback question, which gives a warranty against Stroman fallacy. We are making sure if we understood correctly. Presupponendum is also oriented on truth and person, where the principle of charity is aimed to get a better understanding of the statement, which might be used in various purposes, even against the opponent. So presupponendum requires to adapt the other's perspective. It also shifts the suspicion of error from the other to myself, assuming the possibility of listeners' co cognitive bias, lack of understanding, or fallacious reasoning. Maybe it is me who is wrong, or do I want to understand it correctly, or am I able to understand it correctly? What's more, it does not stop on achieving a correct understanding of the opponent. It goes further to correct all mistakes, with love, in dialectical process, or with any other appropriate means. And lastly, it shifts the accent from correcting the other, or sticking to one's guns, to discovering the truth. In this way, it is dialectical. Now, we may ask, is presupponendum dedicated for Christians only? The answer is, not to Christians, but to all true seekers. For it favors not only charity and justice, but every kind of inquiry as well, prudence and enlightened self-interest, also urge us to remain open to the possibility of discovering truth. Also, the care for the other who is, who is wrong, to examine his or her position or change his or her mind, might not be Christian specifically. It might be a result of responsible understanding of civil society. Therefore, presupponendum, although it was created for Christians, by Christian, is not dedicated for Christian exclusively, and the public discourse might highly benefit from it. Now, to conclude, the principle of charity tells you to treat the other's people as intelligent. If you treat people as being intelligent, you will do a better job at evaluating the arguments. 
It can also be supplied with Hallon's razor, assuming that people are good by nature. Such principle of charity requests to see people as intelligent and good. Ignatius' presupponendum is a radical version of this principle, strengthened or extended, for it also tells you not only to adopt the best possible interpretation before you evaluate one statement, but to make sure you understood it correctly by clarifying the question. Then, if you are sure that the statement is false or fallacious, it requests to present your counter-argument with love, and optionally to show how the statement can be improved to avoid fallacy or falsehood. In this way, it decreases the potential for fallacy and helps to build efficient and gentle discussion. And obviously, it's not for Christian only, but may be seen as a Christian contribution to argumentation theory. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to ask them now or to write a comment if you watch us online. You may also send them via email. And please remember to be charitable when interpreting this stuff. Uh, if you have any questions on site, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jakub, for your presentation. Uh, you have just uh, made a precision uh, saying for what categories of uh, believers and not believers, for everybody um, uh, was this recommendation to use charity principle. Uh, but I wanted to ask you uh, for what uh, types of discourse uh, Ignatius uh, recommended to apply this principle uh, most of all, or uh, ma making some priority for some types of discourse, for example, for exegetic, probably for exegetic uh, purposes. Uh, and uh, this is the first part of my question. Uh, and I think uh, about pragmatic linguistics, uh, the theory of acts, of Austin, uh, and so on. Um, so uh, about the situations where uh, some statements may be not clear, uh, and um, but it is uh, ordinary life, everyday life. So uh, did uh, Ignatius make a difference between different types of discourse, uh, rhetorical debates, for example, uh, exegetic practices, uh, or ordinary life? What was a priority for him? Uh, to, for, for application of this principle, uh, if, if any. Uh, and uh, another part of my question, uh, uh, another part of my question was, uh, uh, if I remember, <laughs> um, ah, uh, it is well known that um, Bible is not a simple discourse, it is uh, very close to poetic discourse, poetical discourse. And uh, in poetry, uh, there are many elliptic uh, statements, elliptic uh, uh, yes, metaphors, metaphors, and uh, the value, uh, so what thought, uh, what uh, Ignatius thought about uh, the value of clarity compared uh, to the value of metaphor, of allegory, and uh, uh, what, what, what could you comment um, on the relation, uh, on, uh, is there any contradiction, uh, was for him uh, more valuable the clarity or uh, it was a distinct thing for him from the metaphorical value of Bible of uh, its strength, its force, uh, because you, you said that uh, the, char the principle of charity uh, says that uh, people will understand clear, uh, easily, more easily, if you express yourself clearly. But the Bible is not constructed like that, and there is another value, this poetic value, uh, which uh, uh, makes people to penetrate the, the soul of others or the um, profound sense of Bible through metaphors. So, is there any contradiction or, or not, and how, how could you comment on this? Um, 
mute on the left. left, left. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you for these two questions. Uh, the first, the type of discourse, I, I mentioned it in the presentation that Ignatius wrote this instruction for the exercitant and, and the spiritual director. So this is a very narrow application of it. Only for the religious people, two of them, one of them is a spiritual director and the other is the exercitant. And this is nothing to do with logic and theory for argumentation. This is basically about two people when one comes to, the, to another and share their experience. And this is Ignatius. And what I did with Ignatius, I applied this to the argumentation theory where you can, where you have principle of charity. And principle of charity asks you to put a good interpretation of it. Ignatius, if you want to follow this, I uh, presented some rationale for this, it says not only put a good interpretation of it, but assume a good will. Ask the feedback question, how do you understand it? If, because I put all my efforts to rescue your statement. Nevertheless, I mean, I, I, it, it's not only for the people sharing their experience, it's for us having this discussion. We are on the philosophical conference, we are having, we are maybe not arguing right now, but I hope we will, um, we are having discussion. And basically what we do, what Ignatius wrote, is a human temptation to put a wrong interpretation of it, to assume that you are irrational or you, are, you have a bad will, you are a malicious or, so Ignatius, Knowing this, knowing the, the, the temptation to, to, to sin with a tango, I, I, I read the passage from him, is, is saying basically put a good interpretation, ask how one understands this, and if, and, and if this first and the second step fails, correct with love, or make sure you, you understood it correctly and you correct the other if you are sure that he's wrong. But first make sure that you are not wrong. So this is, I would say that this is the, the top of the top of what you can do to avoid putting wrong interpretation or to, to do a strawman fallacy. Uh, we can ask what, how, <laughs> who could apply this? Because no one, no one of us do this really. I mean, look at us. This is the question I received uh, on the other on the other room, what's the purpose of doing this? Basically, we failed with the principle of charity. So, what's the reason of extending it in a Christian way? And this is a really hard question. Uh, psychologists, psychologists, uh, when they are working with their clients. Okay. So you mentioned you psychiatrists. Okay, you mentioned psychologists and psychiatrists. I would say that this is a path to follow. And the reason for, for creating one is basically to, to set the direction which we can be turned to. But um, basically, I, I must admit that I fail the principle of charity very often, and I fail the, the principle nendum, a fortiori. Um, one more question. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, I see Tony. Hello, Tony. Nice to see you. You can unmute yourself and ask the question, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to ask if the principle of charity uh, in discussions uh, involve tolerance, empathy, and correction with love, how can you bring uh, someone who is an extremist or maybe a conspiracy theorist to the realization of the truth against his own errors when he believes so much that uh, uh, empathy or tolerance means weakness and also believes that any opposing view is an attack, a malicious attack on his own view and also believes that he, ha he, ha he gains from spreading this Misinformation or misinformation, as the case may be. So, how can you bring 
this stiff-necked conspiracy theorist to the realization of the truth. If you are doing charity in love, do, that is, if you are doing charity in the discussions you're having with him. Okay, that's that's really hard question, isn't it? <laughs> so, if I understood you correctly, you ask, how can I apply the principle of charity extended in a in an Ignatius manner to the to the people who are not who are uh, who who have the attitude of attacking and they are not open to 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 discuss, right? Exactly. Well, Mm -hmm. Well, the, the answer would be um, the, the Ignatius made this, this four steps, and the third was the correct with love, and the four, the, the four was find any appropriate means, and that, that that's really interesting. What does it mean? Doesn't mean it, he meant probably use not only argumentation, use any possible means. So not only if if the you know the, the philosophical or logical or rational discourse failed, try another mean. Maybe try to convince. Maybe try another way of persuasion. We have plenty of them. Of, co of course, there there are unethic, unethic, unethical ways of persuasion. But there are also another one. And maybe try this one. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe just just try to talk, just try to play uh, another language game. If we if we use Wittgenstein language, just if if you failed in the language game called rational discussion, and someone just is fighting with you, and I want I will stick to my guns because you won't convince me, even if. Um, if, even if I'm wrong, just try, just change the language game. Just ch change language game to, I don't know, maybe let's share our experience. Maybe we, we stop just discussing and le let's start talking. If, if we have this distinction between discussing and, and talking, sharing my, sharing our experiences. I don't know if that answers. Maybe this is this this is the escape from your question. 